Hello everyone, and welcome to Godox Film Lighting 101. Here, we'll show you some tips and tricks on how to achieve cinematic lighting for your projects. Today, let's talk about the basics. Lighting for film can be extremely overwhelming when you're just starting out. It's easy to get lost with all the terminology, so hopefully I can help by introducing a few simple techniques to help you get started. First off, let's talk about key light. Key light is the primary light source for your scene. It is the most direct and intense source of light for your typical scene, and is the first to be set up to cast light on the actor or subject. Understanding how to manipulate key light strength, color, and angle can help you achieve different moods. Speaking of mood, here's how key light can affect it. A dramatic and suspenseful thriller film will often use low key lighting. Low key lighting relies on harsh shadows and high contrast. The shadows and deep blacks are more predominant than midtones, and the transition between highlights and shadows are harsh. The background and overall aesthetic is generally darker, giving the scene a more dramatic effect. On the other side of the spectrum is high key lighting. High key lighting refers to a much softer and brighter look. You've seen it in many romantic comedies, sitcoms, or even wedding videos. This has minimal shadows, less contrast, and more highlights. The style of key light helps create a mood that is cheerful and more upbeat. Key light creates shadows, so a fill light, like its name suggests, helps fill in these shadows. The fill light is positioned at the opposite end of your key light and is often not as bright as the key. To help make sure your fill light does not overpower your key light, you can bounce light off a wall or reflector or use a form of diffusion to help soften the light. Here, we've used a Godox Lantern softbox to help soften the fill light as it falls onto our subject. We'll dive more into softboxes, diffusion, and how to bounce light in just a minute. Backlighting is used to create a third dimension in a scene. This light faces the subject and is placed a little higher and from behind. This creates a rim around your subject's shoulders and hair, which enhances the subject's shape and depth while also separating them from the background. Using backlight by itself can create a silhouette of your subject, making things more dramatic. Combining key, fill, and backlight creates the three-point lighting setup. This is the standard lighting technique used throughout the film industry. Here, light is coming from all three different directions. Each light source illuminates a separate dimension of the subject and creates an image with greater representation of height, width, and depth. Bounce light, also referred to as just bounce, is reflected light. You can use tools such as a shiny board, foam boards, or even portable five-in-one reflectors to help bounce light onto your subject. A wall or ceiling can also be a way of bouncing light around your scene. There are infinite options when it comes to bounce. If you want to achieve a softer light, use a foam poly board like the one we used here. The poly board has a matte surface which allows for soft reflected light. We shine the Godox VL300 directly onto the poly board, which reflects soft light onto the subject. Here, we bounce light off of the wall to create our fill light. The brighter the wall or ceiling, the brighter your bounce will be. Here's an overview of how we created a three-point lighting setup by bouncing two of the lights off of different sources. Hard light creates harsh, sharp shadows. Hard light is used to draw attention to a scene or subject like for an interrogation scene or theater monologue. In hard lighting, the transition between the light and the shadows is very harsh and defined. When your subject is immersed in hard light, their silhouette will cast a distinct hard shadow. Think of hard light as how things look on a sunny day with the sun shining directly onto a subject. The moon is another example of hard light. It is a distant, single point source that casts harsh shadows even at night. Soft light is a type of light with a few hard shadows that's bright yet balanced. The shadows are much smoother, similar to how things look on a cloudy or overcast day, with clouds creating diffusion from the sun. Diffusion is used to soften the light from a hard source, creating a more pleasing skin tone. Types of diffusion are gels, silks, soft boxes, lanterns, even window or shower curtains can diffuse light. Here, we're using the Godox P120H softbox to soften the light. This type of softbox allows for a smooth, soft beauty light while still allowing it to be directional. With diffusion, the closer you are to your subject, the softer the light will appear, almost as if your subject is glowing. If you move the light further away from your subject, the intensity of the light will decrease, but the light will appear harder, creating more defined shadows and contrast. Motivated light is used to represent natural light such as the sun's light, moonlight, or street lamps. It is mostly used to enhance practical light, such as light coming from a window or another source that is actually seen on screen. Here, our background was illuminated by several frosted windows in the background. We took advantage of this ambient light and used it as our backlight. We then used the Godox Lantern softbox to mimic the windows seen in the background. 
The lantern allowed for smooth, soft light across the subject, making it seem as if the windows continued throughout the room. Practical light refers to any light in a scene that actually appears on screen. Practical lights range from household lamps, candles, a television set, police lights, you name it. These lights help the scene look more believable and natural. Many times, a practical light isn't powerful enough to illuminate a scene on its own, so we use lights off camera that are motivated by these practicals. These lights can give the scene a boost, but still allow for things to look motivated by the practical light. As an example, we quickly put together a small scene. To help slightly enhance our scene, we've added a VL300 with an orange gel, also referred to as CTO, along with a frost gel to help soften the light. We also placed a battery-powered Godox ML60 with a CTO and frost gel within the scene. We placed this on the ground behind our subject to help pull her from the background and mimic the light from a plug-in night light or the reflection from the lamp as it bounces off of the chair, table, and window. Hopefully, this introduction to some basic lighting will help you understand the fundamentals to cinematic lighting. Remember, there are no rules to creativity, so always feel free to experiment to see what works best for your project. Speaking of projects, do you like free stuff? Let us know your favorite movie scene and what style of lighting you think they used in that scene. Leave your comment below to win a Godox product, and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more lighting tutorials. Maybe we'll even try to recreate and break down the scene from your comment in a future episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to Godox Film Lighting 101. We'll see you next time. Happy filming.